My name is Wayne and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to install the Hotchkiss rear sway bar on my 1970 CUDA. So I've had these for a while and it's a project that's been put off for a little while but now that I have the wheel cribs made in the car on them we can get them installed on the car. So let's take a walk over here and take a look at everything that came with them in the box. So we have the rear bar and the end links, uh, the bushings and brackets, the two U-bolts. Then we have the brackets that go to the rear axle and the U-bolts will slide through those. And then this is a support bracket that gets welded onto the frame rail. And then this gets welded to the support bracket. They do that because the, rear, the frame rails are not that thick, so they want to have all extra material. So this is a really thick bracket, so the, this has to be welded on as well. So pretty simple, straightforward. But the first thing we have to do, if you have it, is get the car in the air, which we have already done. And now we're going to get these brackets on with the u-bolts and get things lined up all right so we're under the car and i have everything laid out now the first thing we need to do is get these bushings um, onto the sway bar and uh, use some of their uh, grease that they supply all right so i lubed up the bushings and uh, i couldn't open them up enough to actually slide them over the bar so i had to slide them on from the end which got grease all over the bar then i had to go back and try to get that grease off and that stuff is so hard to get off but it's on, cleaned it up a little bit, and now we need to get, sort of put everything together at once, right? We need the U-bolts over the axle, then this bracket, and this bracket, and try to hold it all together. So i got to figure out a way to do all that, and uh, with one person, it should be fun. Alright, so I'm trying to hold the little bracket to the U-bolts around the axle with a little painter's tape, and then I'm going to try to raise up the sway bar, and hopefully get these bolts started. Or the nuts started. We'll see. Alright, so that worked. I already have the uh, passenger side started. And now we're just going to start the driver's side. Sometimes when you only have one set of hands, you got to be creative. Figure out a way to hold everything in place. Alright. Alright, great. Now we can take off the painter's tape. Get rid of that. Now we're just going to snug up these bolts a little bit, just to try to see how things look. Yeah, so I got this uh, little driver for my birthday a couple months ago, and what? A difference it has made. I wish I had it months ago, but here we are. So here's another look at the hardware and the brackets we're going to need to install. Now these are special bolts that I bought. Um, they recommend using these if you have the offset shackles like I do, because what can happen is uh, the end link or dog bone can be really close to the leaf spring and the lower bolt so whole location so this will give you more clearance apparently so we're going to assemble this now we're going to put this together the end links onto uh, the sway bar so we can help figure out where these locations are going to be on the frame rails so i have the sway bar just temporarily mounted and these brackets are supposed to be you know level that's why um you want the car level on the wheels and tires, but obviously it's up in the air. But what I did notice is when I look at this end for the sway bar, it is way up high. It should be down here. I mean, I installed it, the sway bar, just based off the sticker. But uh, they must have the sticker upside down because there's no way that's going to work. You know, because there's no room even for the end link, right? So it's got to flip it around so that should be fun so here's the new uh, bolt that we're going to use for the lower mount of our dog bone so we have more clearance with our leaf spring because with the offset shackles it moves it a lot closer to the leaf spring because the width of the sway bar is all 
fixed right so this gets really close rather than having a big show a head or a nut depends on how you orientate it you need to have more clearance so we have to press this bushing out so we can use this so and the way we're going to do that is just use our vise with a couple sockets it's not a super tight press fit so you want one socket large enough to where the existing bushing can come through and then the other one needs to be basically the size same id size as of what you're trying to press out so we should open up our device pretty much as far as this little one can go get everything lined up and get it pressed up so the bushing is almost all the way out and now Just a little too hard to do by hand, obviously. But with a vise, a couple sockets, no problem. And now we just got to put the right, the new one back in. We're going to put some grease on it. Here's one I already did. So since these, you just got to make sure they're going opposite of each other because if they're both in the same way, they won't fit. So we're going to apply a little bit of that sticky grease. Try not to get any on me. Simple wipe off an extra grease, and now those are ready to go. All right, so here we are. We have the rear sway bar to the U bolts and that bracket all secured to the housing. And uh, you also need to have the end links and this bracket all attached, which I do. That way, you can just get it all lined up correctly with the frame rails. And there's the uh, support bracket that will have to be welded to the frame rail. And the tricky part was trying to get the axle bracket level. So I just have this little digital level. Thankfully, it kind of fits right in. Just enough space. And I was able to get this bracket level before I secured the sway bar bracket to the U-bolts, to the housing. So that's all secured in the right location. So now what we have to do is just um, mark this location and... Once that's marked, I will take this back off and uh, prep the frame rail and then prep this so we can weld this bracket to the support bracket. And then this gets welded first. So these are all cleaned up and prepped ready for weld other than a quick wipe down but you can see how we're going to weld basically your all all your edges together and then we'll we'll also weld um, inside these holes um, to the actual bracket mount to the support brace that goes under the frame rail and once these are all welded together we'll clamp this piece to the frame rail and weld this to the existing frame rail in the car you know, last time I was doing some welding, like the day after, I was not feeling so good. Not just sick, but kind of like headachy. And some people commented that it could be, you know, probably from the fumes actually probably wearing masks. So I'm a, I'm a small mask, not a true like respirator, but I'm going to use that today while I do the welding. And hopefully that helps out.
brackets cool off and I just kind of wire wheeled them a little bit and use a scotch bright pad on them to clean them up and the welds came out all right um, it definitely had a challenge um, for two reasons is you know I knew this material is much thinner than this material as you can see but uh you know this had I mean, this bracket had, had a bend in it so I had kind of like a big you know cavity I had to fill in and it was just a little tricky for me some of the welds were good and then this one I needed to fill it in a little bit as well and you know this one is not too bad but yeah always a challenge you know so the next time though I think when I weld these onto the frame rails I'm hoping it goes a lot easier because I think I'll be welding a lot similar material and it'll be a lot easier to weld just this you know trying to well, this to the frame rail I think is going to be pretty simple. I hope as long as I have a room in there, which could be another key. Right. So what, now that these are done, I'm going to take them underneath the car and we're going to mark where they go on the front, or I should say top and bottom edges of this bracket, and then we'll go from there. All right, so we're just going to make a mark at the bottom and top of the frame rail. Put a little arrow there as well on top. That way I can see where I got a weld. So I decided to put a jack stand with a cinder block in the front of the rear axle by the frame rail. I figured this way it would give me the most clearance when I have to weld these brackets on. I had to jack up the car a little higher, but no issues. So it's all supported good now, nice and steady. And now I'm gonna take the wheels off. Now that I have all the lines marked where I need to do my welding, I'm going to go in there with a the grinder and uh, clean off the frame rail so we have a good clean surface to weld on. So I have both brackets in place on the frame rail. I used the line that I marked on uh, the frame rail with my Sharpie and now we're going to get them tacked in place so they're all good and stable. And then I can get them a, a clamp in here to make sure it's all nice and tight and uh, start welding all the all the seams. And before I do any welding on the car, it's always a good practice to disconnect your battery ground cable. I've heard horror stories, people weld on the car, they don't do that, and then all of a sudden the ignition system doesn't work. So I always take that extra cautious step to do so. It only takes a minute. I'd rather be safe than sorry. tacked in place on both sides, two on each side. Now we're gonna get ready to put some beads down. Some 
of those angles were just a nightmare to reach, a couple of those edges, but overall, it went pretty good. We're gonna let it cool off, clean it up a little bit, and take a look. So the brackets are all welded onto the frame rails, and overall, I'm pretty happy with it, you know. Uh, I'm no professional, that's for sure, as you've seen in my last couple of videos, if you saw them, which you should have. Just learned to weld, right? So these are gonna work. It was definitely tricky on the inside where I just had to try to work around things where I was trying to get the torch and you know I didn't have good angles on a few of the edges I was trying to weld. On the, on the outside here I think it came out pretty good pretty solid all things considering like I said trying to get a good torch angle up here and here was really challenging but um, that didn't look you know some of the other ones came out okay all things considering but um so anyway I'm gonna clean them up so, so here's the driver's side on the outside not too bad not beautiful that's for sure but i knew they wouldn't be what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get some primer on them and uh paint and uh yeah go from there so the brackets are all painted and the lines are all unmasked and it looks pretty good and now we're going to install links So I just had my son help me get the end links on and I just greased them. There's the driver's side. And here's the passenger side that came out great. And now we're going to get the wheels and tires on the car and get it back on the ground. Now the wheels and tires are back on the car and now we need to get it back on the ground. So that is going to wrap up the install for the Hotchkiss rear sway bar. I'm so glad to get this project done. It's been the last one on the list to complete the Hotchkiss TVS system. You know, this whole process took longer than I thought, but life happens, right? A lot has been going on. I had to build some wheel cribs. That took some time. Working on some welding. That took a lot of time as well. And just, you know, just life. We had a, a death in the family uh, recently and not as much time as I hoped and wanted in the past few months to work on the CUDA but we're getting through it one day at a time unfortunately today's weather is not so great take a look at this crazy Michigan weather it has been raining and cold for days and now we get to cross one more thing off the list that is the rear sway bar with that being said, the next project is I need to get the car aligned, and I think I'm going to make a video of that as well. Go over the alignment specs and take it down to the shop, and uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Well, that is going to be it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and if you did, please hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And if you turn on the bell notification, you'll be notified each and every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.